Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 6, Genetic Change. This is video number 12, and we're going to talk about some of the benefits and potential um, negatives associated with the use of biotechnology. We need to do this because we want to investigate the uses and applications of biotechnology, past, present and future, and um, see if we can identify some of the potential benefits for society of the research that's associated with genetic technologies. So we're focusing here on genetic technologies and we've talked a little bit already about um, CRISPR as a particular um, application of genetic technologies and biotechnologies and what the future may um, hold in terms of the application of that. So now we want to see if we can draw out some of these important benefits um, to see how the benefits and the potential negatives um, stack up in this type of technology. So let's contextualize this a little bit and try and pull some more things. Obviously we're going to try and make sure that you've got some good examples in class so that you can talk about a range of different types of applications of biotechnology. New fields of research we hope will yield lots of results um, in medicine, genetic therapies, uh, the uh, particular curing treatment of different types of diseases. There's a, there's a very large field um, that's related to the medical um, industry that really can benefit from some of these important biotechnology applications. Drug designs being enhanced by studying molecular structures and also various chemicals in order to look for through the drug libraries uh, to see what drugs already exist and um, what diseases they target and also to match up those types of diseases or disorders where there is no particular treatment at the moment to see what sort of options we might have in the field of biotechnology uh, and genetic manipulation in order to see if we can deal with or address some of these disorders. Biotechnology also provides quicker, more efficient means of addressing some diseases and disorders. And we talked a little bit about human insulin, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about this use of recombinant DNA techniques um, to, uh, to help with our uh, large-scale industrial production of human insulin. What we want to try and do is see if we can identify some of the potential benefits. That's what we're after, to see um, what, where this could possibly go wrong, but where it could possibly go right, and see what happens. Now, any use of biotechnology is also going to have an ethical component to it, and we do need to understand some of that. And we also need to recognise that a lot of the research is happening more quickly than the legislation associated with it. And a lot of it's going to come down to international organisations and how they, as a group, all get together and decide um, how this sort of technology is going to be used. So I guess if we're going to look at the benefits, then we have to look at some of the potential negative implications that might be associated with the use of biotechnologies and genetic technologies in particular, um, especially in the area of genetically modified organisms. We just still aren't 100% sure of exactly what they are doing in the environment. A lot of this technology is very new, so therefore there's not a lot of longitudinal data. We don't know long term what some of these effects may have. We also don't know what sort of an impact this um, artificial addition of genes into living organisms or the moving of um, genes from one uh, species to another, which is what transgenics is all about, um, how that's going to play out long term um, for the species survival. Unfortunately, we have to be aware of things like bioterrorism. We need to understand, um, I mean, the white powdered anthrax was one of those um, things that we worried quite a lot about some years ago. And of course, uh, bioterrorism just continued to progress a long way down the track since those days. So now we've got to understand that for every positive that we can think of with every genetic technology, there must be a consideration of how this might um, cause damage if it got into the hands of people who um, were um, prepared to use it for whatever purpose um, they wished. Uh, we need to consider laboratory and production safety and of course uh, when you're dealing with living organisms um, 
it, the, the safety procedures are critically important. They're always important in laboratories, and you know that we do risk assessments every time we carry out experiments in our own laboratories. And of course, the handling of um, certain types of microorganisms, especially ones that have the potential to cause disease, uh, require a specific focus on laboratory safety and personal protection equipment um, and protocols for how they're going to be handled um, stored and disposed of. How we protect human subjects in clinical trials is important. We, we are aware of um, some girls in China that have um, had some exposure or some uh, creation, I guess you might want to talk about it, um, with uh, using the CRISPR technique. And so obviously we don't know what's happening with them. If we're talking about uh, making changes in the germline, then you've got issues of consent because obviously if you're dealing with um, if you're dealing with um, gametes or stem cells um, they haven't become a person so there's no opportunity for that future person to give consent in retrospect you've just got to have it assumed um, and we just don't know what a lot of the effects of some of these genetic changes are going to be at this stage um, affordability is one of these things that, that we've noticed, those who are a little older like me have noticed with things like computers. They started massive, they took up entire rooms and they were worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now they're in your pocket and they're worth hundreds of dollars. So um, the same sort of thing we can expect will happen with um, the affordability of genetic technologies. Um, they will continue to come down uh, often uh, on the basis of scale, obviously, as we scale things up, we can do them um, uh, for less in individual unit costs. And as a result of that, uh, we're often able to be able to afford some of these procedures uh, more, uh, uh, more cheaply for, for the individuals who are after them. Of course, there's also another little area there around patent rights and who owns them, um, who owns your genome, uh, if you want to be tested for a particular disease, then we're looking for sections of your own um, DNA, of your own genome, um, who owns the right to those tests and all of those sorts of things. And obviously, these sorts of things can be worth huge amounts of money to organisations. Um, so they're big, big issues. This is a video about benefits, not just dwelling on the limitations and the potential negatives. So these are some of the really important benefits of biotechnology, and I've listed them just as a, um, just as a list. Um, I haven't sort of developed them in too much detail and there's sort of things you want to apply to the specific types of genetic technologies that you're looking at uh, and obviously we will need to focus our attention a little bit more on some of the specific techniques and how these work but in general one of the things that that biotechnology has done is is it's allowed us to increase growth rates so that's been very very important particularly uh, in fields like agriculture but also in medicine, when we've been able to um, produce our um, artificial or synthetic uh, drugs, synthetic hormones, um, and we've been able to do that at a, a fast rate that's, that's enabled that uh, to produce very, very large amounts. We have extended life. We know that the life expectancies have also gone up and that's associated with a lot of things, not just biotechnology. It's associated with improvements in medicine generally, but we are able to extend life and we're looking at lots of different places in the genome where there may be indicators of a potential diseases which may occur in older age uh, or, or even factors which may contribute to whether people live longer lives uh, or not. The development of specific traits, um, and obviously this is something that's important when we're looking at diseases, uh, say like sickle cell anemia. We have looked at the fact that genetics can very simply be reduced to um, a, a, a genotype and a phenotype, and we know that it's not as simple as that. Uh, but we do know that there are certain types of mutations that are very specific in the change that they make to a protein or to a polypeptide and therefore to the function of that particular protein. And so being able to make changes there may um, help restore normality to those who are uh, sickle cell anemic, but maybe we can push that technology a little bit further and improve the quality, improve the oxygen carrying capacity uh, of the, the normal red blood cells. 
this is where, um, again, when we were talking in the last uh, video about uh, the future and what that might bring, these are some of the things that we can kind of speculate on as to whether certain types of traits may even be developed um, uh, in addition to the ones that are already existent. We may be able to cre create new products. We've talked again about, and especially in the area of transgenics, where you're moving genes from one individual to another. And we've already looked at some different types of things. We've talked about the flavor saver tomatoes, um, those ones that um, were specifically uh, engineered to hold their shape and structure for longer so that they could be picked red rather than green and hold that structure and not go soft and sloppy by the time they got to the, to the kitchen table. The faster growth rates can often produce increased yields. Now, these two things can, of course, go together, but they don't have to, depending on what sort of things we're looking at. But certainly being able to increase yields is a big uh, plus, again, for those important industries like agriculture and medicine. Uh, reducing risk to local water is important. Um, if we can identify ways that the water can be contaminated, we might be able to do something to uh, reduce that risk. And the history of biotechnology is uh, ever growing and we're learning a lot more from the early days of domestication, uh, domestication of not just animals but also plants like wheats and we've, as we've gone further and further on to apply this knowledge we've been able to understand so much more about how genes operate, how they affect the expression of phenotypes and how they affect things like uh, growth and longevity and um, food quality and all of those sorts of things. So there's lots of great benefits to the use of biotechnology, quite apart from some of the specifics associated with techniques like CRISPR that we've already looked at. But for that, we'll need to look in class in a little bit more detail. Uh, so uh, we'll leave that for now and thanks for watching.